Hello, this is Vampire. Uh, this is part two to how to defend against the Sucker Punch. And uh, yeah, basically, uh, I think last time uh, pretty much covered that right here, there's just simply not enough time. If we have more distance, we have more time to, to react. But basically here, here, there's, there's not enough time. So the main thing was, I want you guys to understand that this is a very, very bad position. Even if you're right here, it's just too darn close. So because it's a very bad position, um, even though right here, you might think, well, it's equal because yeah, I, I could reach him, but he could reach me too. So this is an equal position. It's not, it's not 50, 50 chance. Because he's the bad guy, he's going to attack first. That gives him a huge advantage, okay? Uh, people don't understand that. So because of that, this is a terrible, terrible position. They have the advantage. Uh, the example I gave you guys was it's the same as like if you watch a UFC fight where the guy's mounted on top of you throwing punches like that. You have to view it that way, that this is a terrible spot. Even if they don't go first, right? Even if they're not going to throw the first punch, it could be either one of us. This is still a very bad position just simply because, like I said, it's not enough time to react. So it's not like I'm going to have enough time to think and go figure out what move they're going to do to me. Okay, And then I go into my arsenal of techniques and choose the correct response to whatever it is they're going to do. And then to properly execute the technique. You know, it's just not enough time to, to do all of that, right? So in the last video I said to you guys is what, what's going to happen is you're going to flinch. That that's perfectly normal. That this kind of thing is going to happen. Some people jump, you know, uh, if it's like a shot to, to your balls or something, you know, you're going to flinch. And this is perfectly normal. So my main idea in the last video that I said was don't fight the flinch. Go with the flinch, okay? And you want to make the flinch response your friend. And uh, this may sound very similar to what uh, uh, Tony Blauer uh, ha has said in, in uh, ma many of his uh, teachings and his YouTube videos. And, and uh, there's no coincidence because one of my instructors that I respected very, very much, he was an excellent instructor, he was one of Tony Blauer's certified instructors. So, uh, and I'm just giving my props to, to Tony Blower. If you haven't heard the name, look him up. Uh, he has a lot of good material. So, so anyway, the main idea here is to make the flinch your friend. Okay, so you should know instead of going, okay, this guy's going to sucker punch me. What technique am I going to do to it? You know, how am I going to counter that? Don't, don't think technique. Like I said, you don't have time to grab from your textbook. You got to go with a flinch. So what, whatever it is, flinch you do, go with that. And then number two is once you do it, don't be surprised that you're doing it. Keep going. Keep going, you know. Um, so, so those are the main two focus points. And then from there, we want to improve our position, right? Because I said this is a bad place. This is a bad position. So get to a better position. But... The next thing that I want to really focus on in today's video is that every martial arts style, even the ones that get criticized really bad on YouTube, like Wing Chun, Sistema, and Aikido, every freaking martial arts style that I've personally seen has a flinch response technique, okay? It, it has stuff for you to go from a flinch and then go, they have techniques like that from this kind of bad, bad situation. It's just that whether you understand that or not, and I think most, most of the people don't know that. They, you got to know what you're looking for, you know? So, uh, for example, a, a quick response right here is, is like, let's take a look at Wing Chun, right? A lot of their punches, they tell you punch upwards. I'm not saying this is the only kind of punch they have, but they want you to punch upwards. And they say that's because it gives you more power. You're involving your spine and all this. You know what? punch up and put your chin up like this, any pro fighter, any anyone who's done any kind of fighting will tell you that that's a bad idea, that you're raising your chin up and you're going to get knocked out, right? Yes, from a fighting, once, once we get to here, once I've improved my position and I'm here, absolutely, that's a bad idea. But from this situation, when you're this close, because a street fight, 
does start differently from a professional match, right? Or, or just like a challenge match, a challenge fight. It, they don't start the same. That's a fact. And most people who, and, and yes, right now I am saying sport and street is different. Most people on YouTube that say this, that use this argument that sport and street is different, they almost always they're hiding behind it. They're hiding behind it and, and they're, they're, they're saying that the Tai Chi person lost because it was intended for a street fight and not for sport or the Wing Chun person lost because it's for street, it's for combat, it's for war, it's not for sport. And to me, those are all excuses. Right now, I am not using it as an excuse. I am saying that it is different the way you start. It's, it's different, it's not an excuse. So at this point, because my flinch, and this is a natural flinch right here, to, to turn away or to even raise up like this and go, whoa, what's going on, bro? Like that. Now imagine instead of doing that, you did the Wing Chun punch right here. Isn't that a little bit better than just here like this? Okay, because now you made it a little bit more offensive. So if you have been putting in the practice, that may come out right there. And if you understand that that would work with a flinch right here in this kind of situation, you have a better chance to making it come out Boom, right into the eyes, you know, whatever. So if you use it like that, then the Wing Chun starts to make sense. The Aikido, where, where you go like this, okay, where you have your hands out, boom. Boom, this kind of thing. If you're trying to do this against the boxer when we're out here, uh, good luck to you. But from right here, from the flinch, boom, and you do this, I, I really don't see a problem. I think that's a good, good response. It almost looks like the spear in some ways. So uh, let's talk about UFC uh, Ultimate Ultimate, the second Ultimate Ultimate. Uh, Don Fry was fighting against Tank Abbott. Tank Abbott, super power puncher, scary brawler, and actually can wrestle this dude was they're fighting each other and Don Fry already got hit the first jab I think knocked him down and his legs are already jello right here so he's wobbling but instead he goes forward instead of going back like most people he goes forward and he's actually able to uh, make Tank trip on himself why because Tank's trying to hit him so hard that he loses his balance and he didn't expect the guy to be coming in on him like that this right here not that different from a Muay Thai stance right here. And Don just kept going. And I'm sure at that point it was almost just survival instinct just kicked in. Okay. So that's the kind of idea. The reason why I think Gracie Jiu Jitsu was so successful in the early UFCs was they didn't know striking very well. And the guy's a good striker. It's like, oh my gosh, he's going to hit me. That's scary. I don't want to get hit. Boom. This is instinctive to do that. To just go, whoa, I don't want that. And then to go hold on for dear life. That's instinctive, that's reflexive, and that's why I think that was the initial success for Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, or one of the reasons why. So, um, the main focus here, no matter what style you do, look for those flinch techniques. See, you know, like if, if it is for you to lean back, maybe a kick comes right in there. Boom, kick, kick, and you do a back kick right here to help you uh, move out of the way. I had a buddy... He was a really, really good Taekwondo guy, and that was one of his moves, but he used it for the street, is that when someone came to mess with him, he would use the back kick, and he was really good at this technique, so he would use the back kick to launch himself off of the guy if it didn't uh, hurt the person as much. So either way, he's running away that way, so it, it, he's able to recover his distance. You know, So whatever style it is that you do, make friends with the flinch. And that's all for now. Thank you for watching and take care, folks.